Yo, what's good, everyone? Alex Gutierrez here with another Jets episode of the Knicks, Jets, etc. podcast. And with me, as always, my buddy, my personal pal, the man of the plan, the one and only, the one and only, John Malika. Yeah, we've been off for a little bit, so we're energized, ready to go. We had a long weekend. We were busy, but we're back at it again. But before we ask John how he's doing, you know what it is. If you listen to this podcast and you haven't subscribed already, please make sure to do so. We're on all audio listening platforms. We're on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon Alexa, Stitcher, you name it. We are there. If you listen to us on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to give it a five-star rating. And if you listen to us on Apple, please make sure to leave a comment. We'll read it. If you guys don't know, we're also partnered with Minute Media and Fan Sighted. So you can find this podcast on the Jet Press, on the Daily Knicks, and sometimes, depending if the actual Fan Sighted page write something about one of those two teams, our podcast will be there too. We're also on YouTube. Knicks, Jets, ETC, period. Find the page, subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you know when a new episode drops. And when you watch a video, hit the like button. Leave a comment, add to the conversation. Let us know if you agree, disagree. If you got a point that we didn't talk about, come on, guys, we already know what it is. You already know what it is. I mean, we got a good one on the last comment. Uh, when it came to talking about Dion and not and not noticing that you, they're both the same age. We appreciate that comment. We appreciate it. Guess what, guys? We got another podcast over there, too. Winning Picks Weekly. John, video producer Greg, co-host and our guy, Chip Murphy. These guys go down everything. NFL, MLB, NBA, PGA, NHL, MLS. These guys do boxing and MMA. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> these guys will give you every single odd possible and they'll tell you where they're going to spend their money. And you know what you should tune in too. If you want to put some money down on the line and you need some help, check these guys out and they'll help you do so, but make sure to bet responsibly. And then last and certainly not least, we're on all social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. We're there. Subscribe, follow, do whatever you got to do to make sure you're in contact with us. With that being said, Mr. Malika, John, Doctor, Esquire, all the above. How are you doing today, bro? How are you feeling? What's up, bro? I'm feeling great, man. I just had a really good Memorial Day weekend on Long Island. Cousin got married, did the best man duties, had game seven going in the old boys lounge they got going for us. So that was Ooh. nice. You know what I mean? Nice. Got to jump in there, but thankfully... Rangers, the middle name is game seven. Apparently, it was easy from the start, six two, but it was two zero right off the bat. Ronta got hurt, all good, six two, no problem. We're off to game one here, so the vibes are great in the garden, which is nice for a change. Game seven vibes, man. Don't don't say nothing about Dolan, don't say nothing about the garden. Like the Rangers are doing it, they have all the pressure in the world, and they're doing it, they're doing everything that we would hope. That those Julius Randle Knicks did against those Hawks, honestly. Uh, Igor is giving us the same vibe. So that's really cool over there. You got the Yankees, you know, holding holding on to that first place in, uh, in, the, in the whole world, right? It, it's fantastic. I know mm-hmm. it's, just, it's just America, but I like to call it the whole world for the World Series. And, you know, the vibes are really good in the Bronx. Even our catcher doing everything. I mean, I don't, I, nobody's even mentioned Gary Sanchez's name, and he's on the best team in Ooh. the Central. So, like, life is good. You know, how, you know that life is good here. On the other side, we got the Mets. What are they like? Ten and a half games ahead right now It's insane. And they haven't. They don't even have their top two starting pitchers. I mean, the vibes right now in New York are amazing. I'm sitting right here at the 50 yard line at MetLife. I'm just really hoping it translates <laughs> over, man. I'm just really hoping it translates over. Oh, my God. If well, the Mets can do it. The Mets can do it, Alex. <laughs> yeah, if the Mets can do it, then you know there's some uh, – there's some there, there's got to be some juju, hope man. for the New York it's Jets. Our it's our time, man. It's New York's time. Everyone's been moaning and complaining that we've been such a bad sports city. Right now we're killing New York City FC, won the last MLS Cup. Rangers are – Killing it right now. I mean, what else can you ask for? Hey, man, there's uh, there's not much else you can ask for. New York is is vibing right now. We got all, everything going well, whether it's Yankees, Mets, Rangers. 
Islanders couldn't do it, but it's all good. Uh, you know, the Knicks got to got to be on the, huh? It's not <laughs> yeah, only all it's... good; it's very good. That's like saying, "Oh, the Nets! Oh, the Nets! They're out." Who? Exactly. Who That's the about. Islanders, bro. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about when it comes to that that team, but we need the Knicks. But we need one other team in particular to bring us back around, and that's none other than the New York Jets. But before we get into that, John, we're also joined. He's become like a, a regular uh, host, co-host about, uh, from this podcast at this point. Got video producer Greg with us, especially when it comes to uh, Jets topics, because no one else is as plugged in as us when it comes to the New York Jets than Mr. Greg Albert, Mr. Video producer Greg. Greg, how are you doing today, bro? How are you hey. feeling? I'm doing good. I mean, we're talking lovely about the Mets. I love to hear that. Yankees have been looking good, so I'm okay with that. For now, we'll see how it goes later on the season. You know, a, lot of, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of talk was about, oh, come see me, you know, Mets fans, oh, May. You know, come see me in June, ten and a half games up, one of the best teams in baseball right now without our best two pitchers, arguably the two best pitchers in all of baseball. So, very excited. Very excited for New York sports. And to John's point, I just hope it translates. You know, we see Mets, uh, Jets guys at the Mets games, at the Rangers games, getting the vibes in, enjoying themselves. I haven't seen any of the Yankees games, but I'm sure they're there. I'm sure you guys have seen them there. So they're just showing love, and hopefully they're just picking up that good energy, those good vibes at New York sports, how great New York sports fans can be when you're winning. And let's bring it into the season, man. I'm ready. I mean, we're doing all the off-field stuff, all the over, you know, off-season stuff, but I'm ready to start getting into it, get these preseason games going. I know we're still a couple months away, but I'm just ready to start playing. I'm tired of talking about how what our record's going to be and all that stuff. Let's just get down. Yeah, I, I'm, I want to play the. I'm, I'm feeling you, man. I'm feeling you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling you, man. I'm ready for football season to get here. I'm ready for August. I'm ready for training camp. Yeah, it's. It's this is the one thing about football. It's that the season is so so short, but the off season is so long. And there we're getting close to the dog days of summer because once the NBA finals is done, we're just waiting. You know, we're gonna have we're just waiting for things to get back up and geared it in September. But once the NHL about, playoffs are done, but yeah, I NHL, got you. NBA, but also Look, the, man, <laughs> football is king. Man. The not, biggest story, not, the I'm biggest not. story in baseball right now is about a fantasy football team. Football reigns supreme all year long. It's a beautiful thing. So that's why we can't wait for it to come back because it is the best. And hopefully the Jets have the best season they've had in a few years. So <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. So let's get into this, man. Because guess what? We got we got an article by. Uh, New York Jets beat reporter for the Athletic, Mr. Connor Hughes, and he decided to detail. Um, he decided to detail, you know, what positions on offense right now, uh, from most to least stable. So he goes from five, five being the most stable, one being the least stable. And if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend it. It was a really good read. Uh, five being the running back, four being the tight end three being the wide receiver or the receiver core, two being the offensive line, and number one being the quarterback. So, guys, how do you want to go through this? Do you want to work it backwards from five to one, as, as he did in the article? Because no. I feel like that or, – or, no? No, 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 no. I just want to – I mean, shout out to Connor Hughes. I know what he's trying to do here. But I just want to talk about the vibes of this team, man. I mean, the, at first we started with, you know, which players are going to the Yankee games. Elijah Vera Tucker is going to the Yankee games. Hell and yeah. – uh, we Pretty sure Zach about, Wilson went to a Yankee game too. Pretty oh, sure he, he did. He did. He was wearing a backwards hat in the Mets game. That was a Mets game. Yeah, yeah. He wearing a backwards hat that Mets game. So let's start. Let's start with Elijah Vera Tucker. He's 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 been the number one trooper right now. He he had the he had the best season on our whole entire team. Probably the the best as a rookie or at least top five in, on the in the entire league. Poor guy gets moved to right guard uh, with, with, with just a phone call for. Tomlinson, who is an all pro and he's the coach's boy. So kudos to him for being able to just take that with stride and give us confidence, right? Give us, you know, the fans, give the team confidence with that move. And, you know, we had some media OTA say that. that's why Connor wrote that article. So I kind of want to start with the offensive line here. And I want to know if anything's changed for you guys because at least they're acknowledging now <laughs> that. Font's going to take one side and Beckton's going to take the other. Like, that was still uh, almost like a theory by me, you know, up, up until today. 
till uh, the press, it was addressed in the press conference. So really quick, like they still haven't showed up. Beckton has a baby and Font's a veteran. They're not coming. So while before, you know, while I was still, you know, ahead here in the dog days, has your opinion changed over uh, one of those two guys? Or better question, who do you guys want to see at left tackle and who do you guys want to see at right tackle? I think uh, – so I, I'm not concerned about the offensive line at all. Um, to the extent that's like last season where, you know, there's some gaping holes here or two seasons ago where, you know, it's just a funnel just going down the middle to attack Sam Darnold. I'm fine. I think it's stable. I mean, when you look at it, you know, you got George fan as Connor put at left tackle, you got Mekhi Becton at right tackle just to stick on that for a little bit. I'm fine with George font being left tackle since you had Mekhi Becton miss an entire season. And since he hasn't been able to show up and not that I'm criticizing him not being able to show, show up, but the fact the fact is he hasn't shown up and if he's coming back from injury, I'm fine with him getting his getting back into the swing of things starting on the right side, rather than being thrown at, you know, the primo position being the blind side when font did a pretty good job last season, you know? So if that's what font prefers and he wants to do because he's comfortable on that side, sure. Let it be. And if you have still an awesome tackle playing the right side, it's, you just have a formidable line. So I don't see the issue with that whatsoever i think people just try to create you know they're trying to create some friction where there's no friction really needed this whole football is all about being family and team and playing all together and just fight if you're all winning it doesn't really matter you know what i mean like positions aren't like especially mm-hmm. since makai so early into his in, into his career it's not really that big of an issue in my opinion i mean i agree with you but at the end of the day font is being that guy font refuses to play left tackle and Left ta- uh, refuses not to play left tackle, right? And we've seen that happen, especially with that specific position, right? Um, the guy he slipped in my mind, uh, Trent Williams, right? He refused to play right tackle, you know, one of the best left tackles in the game. And the, we've seen that happen over and over, right? Whether it's for money reasons or whether that's just for pride reasons. Uh, Taylor Lewan, right? Busting with the boys. He says, I play left tackle. I don't care. So, you know, it, it, it's interesting to see, and I think you're you're right on the money with homeboy gets the shaft, dude. You're a rookie. You weren't there last year. Font's a veteran, and he performed. So I, I agree with you. I agree with that take. But, Greg, what do you got? I think like when we're, we're leading up to the draft and everything, John, I think at one point we were talking, it's lion season then. Like People are just lying. People are saying what they need to say. I feel like this time of the season is story season. Like people just need to come up with stories. They need to come up with narratives. Dude, Font's gonna play left. He played well. He's a veteran. Becton might take six weeks, ten weeks to come back and be exactly who he was two years ago. You just don't know what the type of injury he had, the type of time he's missed, and not being around to start the season. So or to start the off season. So Again, I think it's a, kind of a non-story. I think it's completely fine. The issue that, or the thing that did kind of stick out to me is I was feeling good about the offensive line until I read the article. But I think to the point about stability, it's like if we lose one of these guys to injury, which is probably going to happen at some point during the season because it's football and it's violent, someone's going to get hurt or banged up. Do we have enough depth at all the offensive line positions to feel comfortable about that? I feel like we have some decent depth at tight end now. We have some decent depth at wide receiver now. So that's where I get the consistency thing or the, you know, that's where it kind of underst- I get where he comes in and ranks him number two. Um, going into the, reading the article, I thought it was probably going to be, you know, one of the least concerning positions groups we have, but. Yeah, I'm a little concerned if one of these guys get banged up. Our backup guards are definitely tough. Like we got what do we, we got Dan Feeney and then a bunch of nobodies that we never heard of. Like Nate, Nate uh Herbig from the Eagles, he's you know a name yeah. at least. But like the, the tackles for the first time, I'm actually comfortable with. You know, okay. at least that's a step forward, right? We got Max Mitchell, the guy we drafted. We got Connor McDermott, the touchdown king. We got yeah. uh <laughs> Chuma <laughs> Doga, who like you know, isn't fantastic, but he's our guy from USC. You know, we drafted him. He's been okay. He was not amazing, but I'm at least okay with the tackles, the center position and the guard position. I'm a little bit worried about it, but, you know, uh, I, I kind of agree there. But, you know, let's jump to number one, and it's honestly Alex's favorite 
position on this team. It's what he's most excited about, and that's the wide receivers, man. But at this time, we're kind of looking <laughs> – you're talking about story season, Greg. It's Denzel Mims story season. Right? <laughs> like, like it's, it's as if it's recycled from last year. This year, the story is he's doing better. So, I said he's miles ahead of what he was last year. But, you know, let's take it a step further, right? So, we got Corey Davis, Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, Braxton Berrios. Those are the top four. Then it gets it gets dicey. We got Jeff Smith, who, you know, we praise from time to time, but he's still Jeff Smith, right? We got Denzel Mims. We got DJ Montgomery, who is always on that kind of – you know, roster line. And we got Tariq Black, who did he get? A, did he get a touchdown for us last year? Uh, I, 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 I don't no, know. I don't think so. Doesn't ring a I bell. Think, I, yeah, I, I feel like I feel like he had a big play. Um, maybe with San Francisco. I was just it was just off the top of my head. But what 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 are you guys' thoughts on Denzel Mims' story season and uh, the the wide receiver life? Oh, what we got going on here? Because at the end of the day, it's about Zach Wilson. It's about the wide receivers. We cry and cry and cry all year about how any wide receiver that touches a trading block, if he's not on the Jets, it's a failure. Everything's over. The dream is dead. We're not going to go anywhere. We drafted the top 10 wide receiver. We re-signed our guy who finally did well. Like, what are your what are your guys' thoughts on the wide receiver depth? I mean, I'm fine with the wide receiver depth. I think, <clears throat> you know, we had a lot of concerns on – how the Jets were going to approach approach this offseason, whether they were going to go trade for somebody like Tyreek Hill or going to make a move for A.J. Brown. Ultimately, we ended up not going that direction. We drafted Garrett Wilson because Joe Douglas decided he didn't want to expend so many assets to go get someone of that caliber. We don't break still, the market, bro. Tell him. Tell him, yo, we don't. Joe Douglas doesn't set the market, man. He's not going to set the market. <laughs> but let me tell you something. I'm confident in this wide receiver group that's going to get better over time. Like I said, I think like if you're looking for an impact player from out of Garrett Wilson this season, I'd be super impressed if that were to happen. I think he's going to take time like most young receivers do to transition to the NFL because you're not playing against college cornerbacks where you can just speed by. You're going to get a lot of, you know, just open pockets uh, against the defense to get some easy catches, you know, and even though he played in an offensive style pro system and one of the top, you know, NCAA football conferences, you're going to the NFL. It's going to be different. So I, I'm not expecting him to make that type of leap this season. But over time, I do expect him to get better. And we're still solid with Corey Davis. You still have Elijah Moore. You got Braxton Berrios. Like, we have depth at the position. And it's just like how Mike LaFleur had it out in San Francisco where you're spreading it around to guys. There's not necessarily that true – number one guy although my heart's Elijah Moore but that's another story but (laughs) there's not that true like true 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 like this is going to be the guy that gets it every single play if that does happen I'll be impressed by that as well but I'm confident that we have enough talent in the receiver core that they'll be able to make some plays this team's going to be competitive and they're not we're not going to be looking like at third and ten constantly like all right now we need a big play where I feel like we're going to be getting like those incremental yards to keep getting us closer and keep moving the chains. Third and short is definitely the name of the game. But speaking of your boy, Elijah Moore, uh, he had five touchdowns last year and a rushing touchdown total of six. He called for 500 yards and by all, you know, necessary statistics, he had a fantastic year. Like if guy, how many games? I think 11. Uh, He started in six, but I'm pretty sure he was like in a total of 11 games. It's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. Like, I'll, I'll throw it up to Greg. Like, what are your thoughts on Mims? What are your thoughts on this, you know, receiver depth? And do you think Garrett Wilson could at least have an Elijah Moore season? Definitely. I think that Garrett Wilson, I mean, Elijah Moore was great for us. I think Garrett Wilson's like a much better prospect coming out of college than Elijah Moore was. I think he has more pedigree. Elijah Moore led all led all uh, college in receiving yards. Yeah, because of the, the team and the style that he played on. I mean... Yeah, when you're at Ole Miss and you got Lane Kiffin running your offense, you're you're gonna lead a lot of yards. Like, but Garrett Wilson, I mean, you're talking about Denzel Mims story time. I feel like I read another story every day about Garrett Wilson being the next Devontae Adams or <laughs> Stephon Diggs. I'm like, what is going on? Where was this before the draft? Like, I like so. Listen, man, the, the Jets are moving that narrative forward by 
the only open hold on. You know, eleven on eleven today. They literally threw the ball every single time. Like hold on, hold on. Yeah. The, the, there's 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 a there's an error that happens with the Jets. It's either everything's all rosy because they're ex- expecting to set us up for like. Well, everything's really good. Oh my God, everything worked for them. They had it and now it's all crumbling or it's like they're actually going with it. And we've seen both sides where it's like, this team's going to suck. But then they come out of nowhere and they're like, oh, look at that. Playing well. So I feel like the narrative, I feel like these narratives are, are constantly set up for to pull the rug out at, at some at some, uh, <laughs> at some term. But but keep going, John, keep going. <laughs> yeah, and just like, I'm with you. The Denzel Mims thing I think is interesting. To me, that's like icing on the cake. It's like, all right, cool. Like, if he's good, he's good. He's our fifth wide receiver. I mean, how good could he possibly be? <laughs> Every day, it's all oh, he's so he's looking so good. He's so far ahead. He's fifth on our depth chart. I don't know of a lot of number five wide receivers making a big impact in the NFL. So whether he's along or whether he's you know at par or he's falling a little bit behind. Denzel Mims is an interesting case where people just love to talk about the guy, probably because there was high expectations being picked where he was picked and the you know the unsuccessful start to his career. But if he's good, that's great. If not, we got plenty of options if everyone's healthy. My biggest thing is I I wanted to make a, such a statement right now. I think Garrett Wilson might lead the team in receiving this year. I think yards. Wow. Yeah, yards. That I think there's a crazy. legit chance. That would be That's, actually crazy. It would be crazy. That would be that would be insane if that were to happen. Everyone has 800 Who's yards on? and he has 850, something like that, where it's even. It's pretty close spread out-wise. I don't think there's going to be one guy that has like 1,100 yards and then two guys with like 600. I think it's going to be really spread out this year. I don't – I think unless it's, a unless it's like that type of potent offense like the Rams had where you had three wide receivers and everything is cooking like that. Take I mean, it, it is easy. possible. It's just Take very it rare. It's just, it no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying it. Is. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it is possible. I'm saying it'd have to be that type of level of offense. I'm not seeing that level of type of offense, but still walking three, through that door anytime guys, soon. Yeah. Three guys with 800 yards. You're talking about that's great. 24, that's yards. much better than what we've had before. You're talking about maybe tight ends, get another 500 for everyone. Running backs get oh like two to three hundred. You're talking about like three thousand, thirty five hundred yards. Like NFL quarterbacks throw for five thousand now, yeah. so it's not like that insane. And that's where I want to kind of transition to. If you guys are okay with the biggest X factor for this whole season, to Connor Hughes' point, it's our quarterback. It's the quarterback play. So are we are we going to see know. I think improvement it's be, from I'm Zach Wilson? Like, I might be the only person on the earth that's just not worried about Zach Wilson. Like we saw. From even how bad he was in the team and everything in the offensive line, we seen that he could still put games together with nothing, like literally nothing. And we have every single aspect of this offense has been upgraded, including the coordinators. Obviously, like don't forget we had that death at the like right before the season sure. started too. Like it was tough, and our defense got way better. Our head coach in the second year, like. I know that technically the whole coaching staff is in their second year, not to cut you off, but the whole That's coaching staff is in their second year. They were all yeah. rookies last year. But like, I, I'm just not worried about Zach, man. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't have this like crazy confidence that he's going to be, you know, Aaron Rodgers next year. Like, that's not where I'm, that's really not where my brain is, but no point in my life could I imagine he can't be Derek Carr. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, that's crazy. He, he, I know, I know, of course. Your boy Derek Carr. But I'm just saying, like, he's... What are we doing over here? <laughs> Stop this. <laughs> he's, be, he, he's been, you know, he, he's been able to make really something happen out of absolutely nothing. Like, we beat, like, we beat the Titans last year. Like, that was that was him. You know what I mean? Like, that was a crazy game. I don't know. I've seen, I've seen enough from him that I'm not worried about it. We got Brees Hall and, and, and Michael Carter and Coleman. Like, you guys talking about a team game. Like, Carter's like, yo, no problem. Everyone's going to eat. We're good to go. Like, CJ Uzama is hurt. Conklin is now, like, the, the fan slash coaching favorite, which we always get one every single offseason. We got Jeremy Rucker just chilling there, doing nothing right now. Like, I don't it, know, man. It's funny that you brought up Derek Carr because I just pulled up his stats real quick. First of all, Zach Wilson's already missed more games than Derek Carr in his whole career, so that's one thing to think about. Oh, my also, God. Also, two, number two, his first year, Derek Carr had 3,200 yards and then jumped to 4,000 yards. 
So yeah, let me tell you something. Eight hundred yard jump. Something. Do you see eight hundred yard jump for Zach Wilson this year? I'll let me tell you something. Yeah, let's I, hear it. I, I got for, 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 so. this is as as it gets down to Derek Carr. Uh, because <laughs> this is the Nick Shetsick Sarah podcast, and we are known for going off the rails for a little bit from time to time. Let me tell you something about Derek Carr and that, that Jack Del Rio team, okay? That team was kind of lit because they had Michael Crabtree <laughs> and oh, Amari yeah. Cooper. That, Michael Crabtree, that that man was awesome. I'm just saying. I don't know what happened to Derek Carr in that offense. They went downhill, but if you're, I think Zach Wilson can be, at, at minimum, a Derek Carr type of player. I think he can. I think I like I agree with John. I think he can be. I think w- you look at what he had to work with last season and offensively, right? You didn't have a line. The line got better and he got better off offensive play when we got LDT halfway through the season. Okay. Sure, he had all of his wide receivers cycling through the end of the season, but still somehow looked competent. You're looking at a quarterback that was overthinking the game and wasn't really ready. I think he's going to take. I think he's going to get comfortable in this season, and really just play a simple game to him to his style, and get back on track where he should have been last season. I'm so I'm pretty jumping, confident in that. Is he jumping up? Uh, let's let's call it 700 yards. Is he going to get that that 3,000 like Greg's talking about? So what did he have last? Season? He had 2,300. Yeah, 2,300. Yeah, he can get three thousand this season. I think he can get three thousand. I mean, if you're projecting that all of our guys can get, if you think, if you think Only all of our wide receivers, games too. Only thirteen well, games. Yeah, he missed. Four. It's also that's the other thing too. But also, if you think that our wide receivers can average like around eight hundred apiece, plus another five hundred for the tight ends, like I don't see how you're not getting there. Like that, that legit takes you to that mark. So, no. and the fact that he missed games last season, as you guys pointed out, I think Zach Wilson could do that. But just because you throw three thousand yards. You have to be winning games. That's the most important part. Like, are you winning games? And is it looking? It, I don't need to see the ball like be the prettiest spiral, but is it pretty in the sense where it's like, oh, it's not some just miraculous lucky pass again? Is it actually precise passes? Is it like reading, reading the defense, finding the holes in the zone if it is a zone? Is it finding the? Is it finding the open receiver and man coverage? That's the type of stuff that we got to see from Zach Wilson this season. I think he can do that. You know, he's looking good from OTAs. We're hearing what the reporters are saying. And they're yeah. they're talking. They're giving him glowing reviews right now. And you know what? We kind of should have saw we, – we, we, we should have seen last season coming because the beer reporters were being honest, too, about Zach Wilson. They're like, eh, it was kind of rough. Eh, today was a better day. Eh, it was kind of rough. Eh, today was a better – like, that's kind of how DJ, Connor, and all of them went. Even Rich, they're like, that, it legit – they gave you that play-by-play. So if you're following him right now and you're hearing – all the good, like mostly good days from Zach, I think we can enter in. I think we can enter this season with higher and realistic expectations that Zach Wilson's going to be a better quarterback. Yeah. And I mean, speaking of the news, I mean, uh, coach Mike Westhoff, special teams coordinator, he was out here talking some smack about Sanchez. I mean, that's been his thing about selling the book. Sanchez rookie year, 15 games. 2,400 yards, 12 touchdowns, 20 interceptions, right? I mean, as, uh, Zach Wilson had the nine touchdown to 11 interception. That's the issue, right? I mean, I, like that big of a gap, like the seven, like the 13 to 20, really like it was frustrating watching Sanchez, even though those were playoff years. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so now we got Zach Wilson. I, I'm really, really not worried about it. How many touchdowns? You know How many touchdowns this year, John? You said nine. That's tough for an NFL season. So yeah, how many yeah, touchdowns I this mean, year? Are we going? Are we going twenty? Are we getting wild? I think if he plays every single game, he can yeah. get twenty touchdowns. I really have no problem. I really have no problem with that. And you know, you know what's gonna, you know what's gonna help us with that, Greg? It's field position, dude. Yeah, we have a ridiculous defensive line now, and we were joking about last episode. How? What's the point of all these people? Like, what's the point of all these defensive linemen? What are they doing? Is someone going to get cut? Solomon Thomas is here now. Like, what's what, what's the issue? Our defensive coordinator came out today. He was pretty clear about it. The most anyone's going to get is 30 to 35 snaps. In general, the Jets are, I feel like, fantasy players' worst nightmares on offense. And even, like, if you're doing defensive players, like, nobody on our team is here for the stat line. Everybody here is playing for as a team, and the coaches are making that well known. 
right? We have a running back by committee. We have a defensive line by committee. To be honest with you, I think we have slot corners by committee as well. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure some of our linebackers are by committee. Our wide receivers uh, after the top four are by committee. You know what I mean? It. Our tight ends are by committee. <laughs> you know, I, I really feel like this is a real team. Like you, I know there are people already nervous about the defensive line comment, even though that's been his philosophy this whole time in San Francisco and now here. And honestly, in Seattle, even Michael Bennett wasn't getting every snap. So let me ask you guys a question. Like, what do you th- do you think, number one, that's going to affect the actual offense? Like, it's going to be a big enough change to affect the offense? Just on a D-line standpoint, then we'll end here with the secondary. And secondly, how do you feel about this 30 to 35 snap thing? Like, we're, we're not going to have the top sack leader. Like, we're just not going to have, you know, we're not going to have that guy. Like what? How do you, I mean, unless it's you know an unbelievable season, but everybody's looking to get like those six sacks, five sacks, like a bunch of six sacks, you know, a bunch of seven sack guys instead of one guy with fifteen. You know what I mean? I mean, my thing is, does it really? I could care less about individual statistics as long as the team's winning, right? And I think that's how the team should be. But I do get, I like that's from a fan perspective. I understand the player perspective too, because the individual stats mean you get paid too. So look, I think when coaches talk like this, it's all a template, right? It's a template and they're, they're not going to be a hard stat, hard, fast. We're like, all right, 30 snaps. That's it. Next guy. That's it. Like, like they're not going to be calculating to make sure everyone gets exactly that many snap snaps, whether it's between 30, 35. If someone's got it going, someone's got it going. They're staying in. I'm telling you that right now, but I think there is some sort of Dude, base. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I Look, legitimately man. think that that's why I think that's why people have a problem with it. Cause it's like, dude, Look. you know, we have all these players, but Look, honestly, man. man, I do think it's going to be constantly moving around and think about it. Like for sure, but I don't, so kick, I don't think it's going to be so kick. I don't think it's going to be as cookie cutter as they're making it seem though. I, I like no one's going to be calculating. This is how much you're going to get. This is how much you get. This is how much you get. Like I, I don't see that happening because you also have to have a feel for the game too, right? This is, I mean, we watch enough sports where we we see players who are having it, and then when we see coaches pull somebody or, or and put somebody else in. You're like, what are you doing? That guy had it going. So if if let's just say Jermaine Johnson has it going, he's going to stay in, in because he has it going, and he should. Same thing with Carl Lawson. If he has it going. You leave that man in to obviously they need the rest. I'm not saying you're gonna play every single snap. Uh, it gives me and that's not gonna happen. It gives me confidence that Carl Lawson can only doesn't have to play, you know, 55 snaps off an Achilles or but two look, double. There's ACL. also but there's also I think this is also the trend for the new NFL too, where they're seeing does it really make sense for guys like on a per snap basis to be out there and get gassed? Like these guys need to be fresh and ready to go and be at peak performance. And when you play football. It's seconds. We're not talking minutes. We're talking about seconds. And for that split second, you know, to have that burst, to have that energy, you have to have enough energy in order to do that. So. Yeah. I mean, I I I see, I see, I see it being fine, man. I'm not, I'm not too worried about how, how it's all going to be carved out. The vibe I got from it is just like, I feel like it was the kind of the coaching staff or the defensive coaching staff, just like letting the players know, like the weight of the world isn't on your shoulders. Like, we have a team here that's going to produce as a team. You don't have to play every snap. You don't have to play perfect every single time. You have to come in fresh, do your job to the best of your abilities, and then if you need to get off the field, get off the field. If you can stay on, stay on. Like I just looked it up. The last two seasons, we averaged about 60 snaps a game. So if you're saying it's going to be 30 to 40-ish snaps, you're talking about half the game or so. For the, de- for the defensive line, if you're rushing the passer, I think that might not be that crazy of a thing. Like, I don't I don't think that's terrible. Obviously, you know, if you're playing well to Alex's point, you might get 40, 45 snaps. But I also think, too, it seems like for the offseason stuff so far, there's been a real um, focus on, like, taking it easy, not trying to overexert yourself, and, like, not getting injured. So I think that's the thing. I think if Jermaine Johnson's having a, a hell of a game, and he's at 45 snaps, they might say, like, dude, you're done for the day. Like, we need you all season. We don't need you just this week. So, yeah. 
you know, I think obviously like game situation matters, the season matters. Like there's so many factors that go into it. But I think that's the message. I think at this point in the season, you're just trying to send overarching messages, create culture essentially for your team. And one of the things that I took away from it is that no one player on this team has to do everything. Like it's going to be a team effort all season long. And I love to hear that from our team because I think finally for the first time in a few years, <laughs> we don't have five good players. We have a, a full NFL roster that can compete. So yeah. don't it's all about team. depth. It's, yeah. it's yeah. all about depth in the NFL. It's yeah. all about depth. It's all about next man up, especially when injuries happen because injuries will happen. Yeah. So last season for the Jets, it's only been like a handful of seasons. I can remember where everyone's been fully healthy and the Jets have made it all the way through to the finish line without losing anybody. But that's the importance of having all these guys and all these guys who are talented. And it's just so funny that John brought up, uh, you know, it sucks for fantasy because as soon as Greg said 800 yards per receiver, I'm like, and that's where you stay far away from just wide receiver. Yeah. You're going to be so frustrated. It's like, all right, I got a cool eight points. <laughs> yeah. You're but praying honestly, for a touchdown. I would, I would touch Brees Hall if you can get him. Yeah. Honestly. I think he's going to be a bell, a bell, uh, bell cow. Cow. and, and, um, bell horse. I'm, I'm switching up my animals. Uh-huh. And, um, I also think Carter's going to get some catches too. The tight ends, not too bad on the fantasy watch. Hey, Elijah Moore was killing it last season. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not too confident about drafting a Jets guy. Maybe I would take Hall or one of the tight ends, but we'll see. We'll see how John this season goes. What's up? John, Greg, you guys know that we don't, you're not supposed to jet, draft Jets players at all when it comes to, if you're a Jets fan, you stay far away because you don't want to be hurt. You don't want that expectation. Dude, you're you talking just don't about, want you're talking He's, to the guys that we've been getting Chris Herndon on our roster every year for like five years <laughs> <laughs> before, before last year. So I, I feel you, bro. I'm like, oh, this is the year. This is the year. Yeah. I'm, trying to, think to of, you about well. I'm trying to think don't if either of us have any up. Jets on our dynasty team. I don't think we do. Uh, no, I, I have Elijah it. Moore. I have Elijah I Moore as a, a while ago. Yeah. What's up? I have Elijah Moore as a keeper. Oh, all right. Go. Because I got him. Was it we? It, it, for the way the fantasy this fantasy league works, if you draft them, say fifteen this season, then you lose the fourteenth pick the following season. Yeah. So I drafted him fifteen. So nice. There you go. That's a hell that's, of value. Some, some value. That's value. Let's speak. Speaking of some value, let's talk about our the, the secondary two additions of this offseason. Finally, some good offseason signings. I mean, fingers crossed by Joe Douglas. He's been really having a hard time, you know, if we have to be critical in that aspect of his game. And that's the free agency signings. We got DJ Reed coming from Seattle. He made a nice little comment today that Jamal Adams told him it was all love in Seattle, which I thought was hilarious. And then we got Jordan Whitehead, man. Strong safety, who is taking Jamal Adams' job. I know our video producer, Greg, was really happy to point out some news. So I'm going to hold it to him. I'm not, I'm not even going to drop it before him. Greg, what do, you, what do you got for us on some Jordan Whitehead stats? I mean, I didn't come out with anything. But PFF, you know, they're pretty reputable, came out with a list and rankings of their was it, uh, safeties. Oh, safeties. Box strong safety. So I want to clarify that too. Like guys in the box, Jordan Whitehead, number two, someone else, number three. I absolutely love it. I mean, Buda Baker, number one, he's elite, but so is our guy, Jordan Whitehead. And like the fact that we can bring in these guys, again, not breaking the bank, not setting the market, but bringing in solid guys f- to fill a specific need. We needed someone to be that in the box strong safety thumper. Jordan Whitehead's been that on a championship level team. Hopefully he can bring that experience and culture to the Jets. He seems like he's loving it so far. I mean, everyone's just good vibes in New York all around, no matter what team you're talking about right now. So Dude, I love it, man. I love it's it. It's crazy. The hopium is everywhere, bro. Yeah. I mean, how can we not? He's in the Mets first time since 2006. Like the Jets finally have a team, finally have a quarterback, finally have a coach, finally have depth. best draft in our lifetime, all that stuff. Well, I, we might have even made a free agency signing. Like, who knows? Dude, yeah. it's really it's really crazy how good vibes it is right now, especially when you look at the New York Jets. I mean, even Connor Hughes starts off that article saying, like, how can you not be optimistic about this team? Because truly, how can you not feel optimistic about this team moving forward? It, it just looks better. It smells better. Like, the, it, it's, it's appeasing to the eye test right now where you just look at the – not – I shouldn't say the eye test. It's just – on paper, 
everything looks really good and it doesn't seem bought. Like we we've gone through seasons where it's been bought, where you had I hate keep going back, but it's like where you where it's like remember the days where we're like, oh, are we gonna get Namdi Azamwa? And then that same year we get, oh no, but we we revamped the offense. We got Plaxico Burrs, Derek Mason with Santonio Holmes. And it just you it love would that, you love that San Antonio Holmes squad. God, he makes me sick. I mean, prior. I, <laughs> that was that was worse. I'm just that's not even winning the free agents market, but that's like I'm saying, like on paper works good, but you bought it. Yeah. This 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 isn't bought. This isn't this is you're drafting these guys. It's smart at additions through free agency without uh busting the bank, right? Like that's the way you're supposed to build an NFL team. That's the way I like that Joe Douglas is doing it because for as long as being a Jets fan, as we all know, it's, you've been, we've been buying all these guys and they've been past their prime, just like the New York Knicks. You, you keep buying these guys past their prime and it, it just keeps blowing up in your face. But now they're actually investing into their future and trying to keep guys on rookie scale, controllable contracts and build a team, find the right character guys to build a team right? Because that is the important part. That's the important part that, that has been missing this, uh, this entire time. Yeah. So that, but, that, that's all I got for, you know, these 11 on 11s. It's kind of slow right now in jet season. Shout out to Flacco throwing a bomb to Yaboa. Dude, I really hope Yaboa makes this team. I know it's like, this, <laughs> like, this, like this weird thing I got, but I just, I don't know. Like everyone's on the Mims trade. I'm on the Yaboa trade. Just, just make it, bro. Just, I don't know. I don't think he's going to because West goes here now, but I'm just hoping at least on the practice squad. But th- there is one thing. I w- there is one thing I want to say because uh, breaking news, and this is sad news, but we have uh, Marion Barber, former Dallas Cowboys running back, uh, past the age of 38. And I just wanted to give uh, you know my just want to say you know my thoughts and prayers to his friends and family out there because that's that's a tragic loss, man. At the age of 38, we're losing too many people at young ages. And man, I remember when he was in the league too, man. I remember when he was in the league too. It wasn't that, it wasn't even that long ago. It was legit. Not even that long ago. You, like he was close to breaking a thousand yards so many times. He was, he was legit. He was a legit running back a solid running back for uh, the Dallas Cowboys while he was there for a short career. Yeah, I agree. And unfortunately we're getting old man. This is going to keep happening. It's like, yo, like we oh we knew that guy like oh we just saw him play like it's tough it really it really does stink that's the worst part but you know keep on a little bit of lighter note I'm happy I'm hyped about John Madden getting the cover of the new Madden first time since 2000 like that's gonna be cool you know another guy that passed and you're like oh my god I can't believe Madden you're like dude we're old like yeah <laughs> John Madden so I'm really hyped about that one especially over after a Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes cover last year like. I had to open up my ultimate team and Brady's on 99. I still got to bench him. Like it's tough out here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. So I saw that today. I was like, oh, I guess I'm buying Madden this year. I haven't bought Madden since, I don't know, 2016, 2017. I think, unfortunately, the last time I bought it, Gronk was on the cover. Ugh. Well, if we you're, oh, you're, that was the last one I had. We need, yeah, we, need one I had. A, we need to get a jet on the cover. Well, if you're a KJE listener, you know that we do an annual Madden oh, yeah. giveaway. So. Let's get let's get let's get that rolling, baby. I'm hyped. Yeah. So if you yeah, so make sure to tune in for the next upcoming uh, Madden giveaway. So for all you listeners out there, I mean, man, what was that? Like that's the last Madden I play, and that's the only like from time to time I'll throw that back on and play it. I don't even do two. I don't even play two K like that anymore. I used to play two K. Yeah. These 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 video these they get you, man. They really do get you. And I'm not. Well, listen, gonna, I'm done. Well, listen, FIFA's still rocking. You know that's that's what look man. <laughs> I actually do need to. I do. I do need to get into FIFA. I do need to get into Bro, FIFA. FIFA never stops. Two K during COVID, we when everything was shut down, we did. Everyone gets their own team. You do like a fantasy draft, and then you don't play the games. You just sim, it. sim the games. And you manage the teams, and it was electric. It was the most fun I've had playing video games in forever. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. That's why I do oh, in Madden too. I don't do like the ultimate team stuff. I mean, stuff's changed, so maybe I will. But I draft, I, I take the Jets, I make moves, I make things happen, I just sim the games, just try to GM it up. Look, man, 
I have to be one of the players to play through it. I remember when you lose it, the, the my QB mode. I remember yeah. it was a New York Jet. Oh, that was player dope. stuff. That was dope. You can see the little whole helmet. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that I did, was, uh, I did that the, was the Eagles year. I remember playing with Westbrook and McNabb, a TO, until, I, until my eyes broke. I did the uh, – I made myself a quarterback, and don't worry, we always we always won the Super Bowl when I ran, ran through the Jets. It's all good. I actually I actually have a screen. I actually have a I actually have a screenshot where it was with Marky Sanchez and Braylon Edwards, that team, where I took that team all the way to the Super Bowl. And guess who I had to play in the Super Bowl? The New York Giants. Oh, a different kind of Subway Series. Yeah. Yes, be- sir. Too bad the Giants didn't this year. And last but not least, shout out to Greg Jennings for getting that touch on a broken leg. Shout out to him. <laughs> Never forget it. <laughs> it's a, it's, back, a when, it's like a where were you when you saw that type of thing. Like, best, you'll never forget best place, it. Best play in history in the NFL. <laughs> <Yeah>. Greg Jennings. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Gumby. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great, that's a great, that's a, that's a classic right yeah, there. I, I now I need to go watch that. One of the hardest hit safeties <laughs> in the league. I mean, that was all time. That was like Internet 1.0. That was all time. I thought that was like peak comedy at the time. I was like, this is <laughs> where we're we going to go from here as a society. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Him doing the Marshawn Lynch one was was comical too. too. Oh my! I won't say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was also comical. If you know, now you I got to go watch those again. Know, you know. If you know, you know. We're dating ourselves here. We're dating ourselves. It's all bit. good. A little bit, a little bit. But guys, I think this is a good place to wrap it up. Another solid uh, Jets episode in the books. To all our listeners out there, thank you for tuning in as always. And remember, come on, you know the call to action. If you listen to this podcast, you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe. We're on all audio listening platforms. We're on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon, Alexa, Stitch, you name it. We're there. All right, if you listen to us on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to give us that five-star rating. And if you listen to us on Apple, please make sure to leave a comment. We're also partnering with Fanside and Minute Media. You can find this podcast over at the Jet Press, the Daily Knicks, or even the Fanside uh, homepage if they're writing about the Knicks and the Jets as well. We're also on YouTube, Knicks, Jets, etc. Subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you know when a new episode drops. When you watch a video, hit the like button, leave a comment, add to the conversation. All right, we want to hear your thoughts and opinions too. And while you're also over there, we got another podcast, Winning Picks Weekly. John, video producer Greg, co-host and our boy Chip Murphy. These guys go down everything, every single sport that you can even imagine. John even starts to get into cricket. That does not play. <laughs> Maybe one oh, of slow, I, but more. He said all. He said he said he said he said he's do, he's doing Aussie football next. Don't worry. So if you want to <laughs> yeah. ba- gamble on Aussie down. football, down. this guy's got down. you. Maybe yeah. even some rugby. He may even get you in nah, some rugby. No, nah, no, nah, nah. nah. Oh, come on, man. If you're yeah, not you got to the hell would I get into it? What are you talking about? Watch rugby, bro. What are you talking about over here? I haven't heard any rugby news. We want me to talk about Rooney. We can talk about Rooney next time. We're, we're closing right, out here. Yeah. I, won't, I won't get into Rooney right now. Yeah. All right. And then last and certainly not least, please make sure to follow us on all social media platforms from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. We are there. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in for another Jets episode of the Knicks, Jets, et cetera podcast. We out. Let's go Jets. Let's go Rangers. Let's go Yankees. I guess the Mets can come. <laughs>